So this problem set will conclude our chapter 5 discussion. And I want to work two more problems. The first problem is a dorm room problem. Okay? And this, this may help you to understand some um, misconceptions, of, particularly with fans and things like that, that you may have. And it's the summertime right now as I'm recording this, so this has some interesting applications uh, right now because it's hot. And uh, what we're going to talk about here is we're going to talk about a dorm room or some apartment. Let's say uh, the apartment has dimensions of 6 by 6 by 4 meters. Okay. The pressure in the apartment is 100 kilopascals. The temperature initially is 15 degrees Celsius. Let's say you turn on the fan in your apartment and uh, you're expecting that when you come back at the end of the day, you went to work 10 hours later, uh, that the apartment would be cooler. Uh, now you may think in your head, uh, think about this a little bit in your head to think if, if it would be cooler or not. But we're going to see if it will be or if it will be hotter. We don't know right now, but we're going to find out. So where do we start? Well, let's first write down the first law of thermodynamics. Let's start there. So first law of thermodynamics is the net heat transfer to the system minus the net work of the system is equal to the change in energy of the system. And we usually say that uh, it's change in energy is usually a combination of the internal energy plus the change in kinetic energy plus the change in uh, potential energy. But these other values we can ignore, particularly for this case. Um, the potential energy, we're not changing elevation really here, so we're not that interested in the, that. Kinetic energy, we're not moving uh, the fluid through here, so there's no really kinetic energy. So we just have a change in U. This change in U, remember, this is an ideal gas. so We can rewrite the change in U. We discussed this in our lecture as CV times delta T. Okay, so I'm just rewriting this. Now, let's think about this too. Is there any heat transfer to or from our system? No, we're not assuming there's any heat transfer crossing the boundaries of our system. So remember, our boundaries are the walls of this apartment, okay? So there's nothing, we're assuming that it's an adiabatic system, okay? So we're going to ignore the heat transfer, okay? How about our work? We have been work done. We do have some work being done on our system by this fan. And we're going to write this as, since we are doing work to the system, this is going to be minus W. So minus, from the first law, minus W, since we are doing work. And that's equal to CV times T2 minus T1. So the negative and the negative obviously cancel out. So we have the work done on the system is equal to CVT2 minus CVT1. Well, what we're really interested in, oh, and I also am forgetting one term here. Since this is a big U, remember we need to take into account mass. So I need to write down mass in all of these terms here. I'm distributing mass through all of here because we're talking about um, the mat, the uh, total energy of the system. Okay, so if we want to solve this, solve this for T two, we can say T two is equal to um, work. Uh, let's see here. 
what's the best way to express this? Work divided by MCV plus T1. How about that? So this would be our temperature too. Now, you guys need to know how big of a fan this is. So that we can assume that this fan is, uh, I don't know, let's think um, 150 watts. So let's say it's 150 watts, okay? 150 watt fan. So this is 150 watts, which is a joule per second. Well, how many seconds is this fan on for? This fan is on for 10 hours, which is 36,000 seconds. We have the mass and the CV. We don't know what those are yet. So let's find out what mass and CV are in this room. So to find mass for this room, we're going to have to use the ideal gas equation. So the ideal gas equation says P times V is equal to MRT. Okay. Pressure, we're assuming, is 100 kilopascals. So we'll say 100,000 pascals. Volume here is 6 by 6 by 4. Since it's a rectangular, rectangular shape. Mass, that's what we're trying to find. How about R? Well, R is the ideal gas constant for this particular gas. So we have the universal gas constant divided by the molecular weight of air. The molecular weight of air we're going to assume is 28.9 kilograms per kilomole. If you are not sure on that, how to calculate this, R value, refer to my previous lectures. We worked out several examples on doing that. Now, our temperature, remember, when we're talking about temperature in the ideal gas equation, we have to use absolute value. So this is 15 plus 273 to convert it to Kelvin. So if I solve for mass here, let's see. If I solve for mass, I'll have 173.8 kilograms. Okay, how about CV? Where do we get CV from? So let me, what about CV? So for CV, and hopefully I can handle the uh, table so that you guys can actually see it this time. Uh, apologize if you weren't able to see it last time. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll to a table that we, so you should be able to see this, yeah, okay. Let's scroll to a table that we use for, so ideal gas. Oh, here's a good illustration here too. So we're assuming, keep in mind, we're assuming that uh, the specific heat of this gas of air here is just a constant value, okay? Um, and we're we're making that assumption, but you guys can see that it's actually a function of temperature. We can get the constants here, and then we would have to integrate this if we wanted to be very exact on uh, the values. But what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of uh, use these tabulated values here and save us some time. Okay, so our temperature here, remember, is 15 plus... Uh, 273, so our temperature is uh, 288, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 388, so that's somewhere between these two values for our CV, so it's going to be somewhere between uh, point, uh, uh, 741 and uh, I think uh, what we can do is we can interpolate. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it at room temperature. Let's save some time, okay? So we're going to just assume that our our 
CV value here is 0.718. Okay. Now we can get a more accurate calculation if we interpolate. We get the actual value, but I'm going to assume it's 0 0.718 kilojoules per kilogram degrees Kelvin. And remember, this is interchangeable since we're dealing with a temperature difference. We can write degree C here also. So for time's sake, let me just write down 150 divided by, okay, divided by the mass of this uh, air in the room, which is calculated to be 173.8 times CV, or I mean divided by CV, which is 718 joules. Now keep in mind, this is in joules. Now I've converted this to joules per kilogram degree C, and this is kilogram. So these end up canceling, these end up canceling. Our temperature two, oh, this is 150 times 36,000. Apologize for that. Okay, 150 times 36,000 divided by uh, this number plus T1. So plus T1. Well, I'm just a mess here today, guys. I don't know what's going on. Let's see, plus T1. In T1, we determined, or we stated that it was 15 degrees Celsius. So if we solve and put in the numbers here, we should get a value of 58.3 degrees Celsius. OK. So that is the way we could work out that problem. In other words, since there's no heat being transferred from this room, it got really hot uh, from turning on the fan. And this is kind of an exaggeration, I think, of uh, the temperature increase probably that you would expect in an actual room because it would transfer heat away in an actual case. It wouldn't be adiabatic. But you can see the general idea is that um, we increased the temperature of the room because we're doing work in it. I mean, we're adding energy to the air in the room so that temperature is simply just increasing in the room. Okay? Let me work a final problem here from Chapter 5 where we just have air. Uh, in, let's, this is an isothermal problem. So we'll have air in state 1. And temperature remains constant. Initially, we have the air at 600 kilopascals. It expands. And after expansion, the uh, pressure goes down to 80 kilopascals. And what we want to do is we want to find the volume. We want to find the work. And we want to find the heat transfer during this isothermal process. So you may think to yourself, well, it's isothermal. There's no uh, heat transfer occurring, and that's not a correct assumption because um, we don't need to have a temperature change in order to have heat transfer. Remember, adiabatic and isothermal are not equivalent. Okay? So let's start this. So let's find out what we need, what we have. Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the equation that we described in our lecture for an isothermal problem that we face for an ideal gas. We have this equation available to us. If we want to find the work, we can uh, use this equation, P1V1 times ln of V2 over V1. Well, in this particular problem, <clears throat> we know P1, 600,000. V1, oh, well, we don't know V1. We also don't know V2, so we're kind of stuck here. So what can we do? So let's use the ideal gas equation. OK, so we're going to use the ideal gas equation. And the ideal gas equation 
we know it very well, you guys should know it very well by now, is PV or P1V1 is equal to MRT1. We just solved for the ideal gas constant of air. I don't think I'm going to show that again. But I know that P1 is uh, 600,000. V1 is what we're solving for. The mass is 2 kilograms. R is 287. And the initial temperature is 473 Kelvin. Solving for V1 here, the initial volume in our system is 0 0.453 meters cubed. So that's the answer to one of our, one of our questions, the, the volume. We also need V2, so let's go ahead and find that using the same relationship, 80,000 times V2. It's a closed system. Mass is constant. R is constant, depends on the gas, and the temperature is constant because it's isothermal. So our volume at point two, even though the problem's not asking, we still need to use it. Meters cubed. Okay. So now we have that information. Let's plug that back into here. Volume one is zero point four five three times ln of 3.394 divided by 0 0.453. So solving for the boundary work here, <coughs> we can show that this comes out to be 547.370 joules. Or we could say this is 547.4 kilojoules. All right, and the last thing we want to find here is the amount of heat transfer. And to find the amount of heat transfer here, we need to determine the uh, or use the first law of thermodynamics. So let's use it. So the first law of thermodynamics says Q minus W equals to the change in energy in their system. Our change in energy here being delta U. And we're going to neglect kinetic and potential energy changes here for the time being. So here, let's, let's think about this delta Q here. So delta Q is Cp, or Cv, times T2 minus T1. Well, what's T2 minus T1 here? Zero. There's no temperature difference between point 0.2 and point 0.1. So this is, delta U is zero. So Q dot is equal to W dot, using our first law of thermodynamics. So simply, the heat transfer is equal to um, 547.4 kilojoules. OK? So that's the applications. We did polytropic process problems. We did ideal gas problems. We did applications of the first law. Now we're going to move on to some closed systems. Uh, that we'll talk about in our next lecture. I mean, open systems, moving on to chapter six and working out some example problems from there.